my name is dr ajit virkud i am a professor of obstetrics and gynecology from mumbai india my sub specialty is urogynecology and pelvic reconstructive surgery obstetrics and gynecology is my profession but teaching is my passion my area of core competence is teaching basics of obstetrics and gynecology hello citizens of the internet today i am going to discuss first trimester termination of pregnancy using manual vacuum aspiration please watch part 1 and part 2 before seeing this part the links are given below i will be showing in detail the procedure done using a double wall plastic mva syringe and a plastic cannula for a 10 week size gestation this picture shows the plastic 60 ml capacity manual vacuum aspiration syringe it has the following parts a plunger a hard plastic syringe with a collar stop at the end of the syringe to prevent the plunger from being pulled when creating the vacuum the next part is the detachable adapter with two pinch valves in opposite directions which can be opened and closed and there are two o rings which help to maintain the vacuum they are not shown here the mva syringe can be reused 6 to 8 times but for that one must know how to assemble maintain and disinfect the aspirator i am not going to show the assembly in detail here but i may make a separate video for that there are plastic cannulae with different diameters ranging from 6 to 12 mm in diameter the business end of this cannula has a sub terminal opening at one side and there are 1 cm interval markings which can be used to measure the utero cervical length that is the depth of the uterine cavity i will now describe in detail the procedure including the technical nuances first and foremost the procedure must be carried out in a well equipped medical center that is recognized by the government for carrying out medical termination of pregnancies since the procedure has to be performed under strict aseptic precautions the operator must wear a cap and a mask but it is not necessary to wear a sterile gown as long as a no touch technique is followed then the operator must scrub his or her hands thoroughly and wear sterile gloves to prevent infection patient may have already received a light sedation prior to the procedure after passing urine completely the patient is brought to the procedure room and put in a lithotomy position with buttocks brought well beyond the edge of the table after this patient's legs are draped with sterile towels and external genitalia are painted with dilute povidone iodine solution before starting the procedure it is very important to perform a bimanual examination to ascertain the size and position of the gravid uterus in this case it is a 10 week size pregnancy after separating patient's labia with non dominant hand the speculum which is a cusco speculum in this case is inserted gently in a slightly downward and backward direction cervix and vagina are also thoroughly painted with dilute povidone iodine solution using a swab on a sponge holder unlike suction evacuation using metal cannula which is done under general anesthesia mva can be performed under local anesthesia that is either intracervical anesthesia shown here or paracervical anesthesia the first injection is at 12 o'clock site where the cervix will be held next the cervix is stabilized using single tooth tenaculum applied transversely on the anterior lip of the anesthetized cervix 
Lignocaine is then injected intracervically at 2, 5, 7 and 10 o'clock positions. 3 and 9 o'clock positions are obviously avoided to prevent accidental intravenous injection into the uterine vessels. After applying traction on the cervix with tenaculum to straighten the uterocervical canal, the uterocervical length is measured using an uterine sound and then the cervical canal is gradually dilated using Hagar dilators once the local anesthesia has become effective. Before passing the dilators, the tip of the dilators must be lubricated with KY jelly or povidone iodine. The amount of dilatation required depends on the period of gestation. The formula is to dilate 0.5 or one number more than the duration of pregnancy. For example, for a 10 week size pregnancy, dilate up to number 11. Since the cervix is soft in pregnancy, it is not necessary to use fractional that is half number dilators as is done in a gynecological DNC. Remember that the tip of the dilator should go just beyond the internal loss and not right up to the fundus to minimize the chances of fundal perforation. The appropriate plastic cannula is then inserted almost up to the fundus. For small size cannulas, an adapter that fits the syringe may have to be used. The formula for the cannula size is, it is the same as the period of gestation. For example, it is 10 mm for a 10 weeks pregnancy. Before connecting the MVA syringe to the cannula, it is charged, that is vacuum is created by closing the pinch valves and applying firm traction on the piston till it locks into position. See the animation for the same. After connecting the syringe to the cannula, the pinch valves are opened so that the vacuum is transmitted to the uterine cavity. Then by doing back and forth and rotating movements, the uterine contents are aspirated. The MVA syringe must always be held at the barrel and not at the plunger. See the following animation. When the vacuum becomes insufficient, the syringe is disconnected and the contents emptied into the disposable plastic bag. The detached syringe is then recharged, that is vacuum recreated. It is then reconnected to the cannula and procedure resumed. The centimeter markings on the plastic cannula help the operator to determine how deep the cannula can be inserted safely without causing perforation. A question commonly asked in the viva is how do you know that the evacuation is complete? It is complete when 1. No products can be aspirated. 2. Uterus appears to contract around the plastic cannula. And 3. There is a grating sensation that is a gritty texture to the uterus. After the procedure is complete, the MVA syringe and cannula are removed. Make sure that there is no further bleeding from the external loss. Remove the tenaculum. Clean the cervix once again with betadine solution and lastly remove the speculum. In the end, I personally prefer to do a biomanual examination to massage the uterus and ensure that it is firmly contracted. A sterile pad is applied in the end. During the procedure, the assistant should monitor patient's vital signs like pulse and blood pressure. Patient should be continued to be monitored post-procedure for a few hours in the recovery room. The vaginal pads must be checked from time to time for any excess bleeding. Patient can be discharged on the same day. Comprehensive contraceptive counseling must be offered to the patient to avoid unwanted pregnancies 
in the future and the need for a repeat abortion manual vacuum aspiration is safe up to 12 weeks of pregnancy with a success rate of 98.6% the advantages of manual vacuum aspiration are one it is done on an outpatient basis it has a quick recovery period and most importantly no electricity is required which is a great advantage in rural areas of india the risk and adverse effects associated with mva include perforation of the uterus cervical lacerations injury to intra abdominal structures such as bladder intestines hemorrhage infection and complications in future pregnancies such as spontaneous miscarriage due to procedure related trauma to the internal loss and preterm labor in rare instances maternal death has been reported this brings me to the end of part 3 of my series on medical termination of pregnancy please watch the other videos from the playlist the links are given here if you want to study more about this topic or any other topic in obstetrics and gynecology please read the following books written by me practical obstetrics and gynecology modern obstetrics modern gynecology clinical cases in obstetrics questions and answers clinical cases in gynecology questions and answers and pelvic reconstructive surgery a monogram on pelvic organ prolapse for purchase inquiries contact me at email given below or ping me at the whatsapp number mentioned below also please subscribe to my new youtube channel called modern obgyn that deals with basics of obstetrics and gynecology and press the bell icon to get regular notifications about new uploaded videos thank you